So they cut the cord, and seconds later, the man sitting on the lawn chair tied to a balloon cluster was soaring up among the clouds. This sounds like some kind of upstyle fairy tale, but believe it or not, this story actually happened for real in 1982. Once upon a time, in 1949 to be more precise, a boy named Larry Walters was born in Los Angeles, California. He dreamed of the sky, but his dream to be a U.S. Air Force pilot was not destined to come true because of his poor eyesight. So Larry became a truck driver and lived like any other person in San Pedro. His love for the sky and his dream to fly didn't go away, though. Larry remembered an idea that occurred to him when he was 13. Back then, he first saw weather balloons hanging off the ceiling at a military store. The balloons were staying afloat in the air, and young Larry thought, why not take advantage of that? You don't need a pilot's license to fly helium-filled balloons, right? So, 33-year-old Larry decided to bring his dream to life 20 years later, and he started preparations for his flight. To figure out how many balloons he'd need for the experiment, he had to have done some calculations. The lifting force of helium is 1 gram per liter. That means 10 liters of helium in a balloon can lift 10 grams. A regular amusement park balloon is about 1 foot in diameter, and it can hold 14 liters of helium. So, it can lift around 14 grams if you ignore the weight of the balloon and the string. To lift a person weighing 175 pounds, you'd need a whopping 5,700 balloons. But if you get 10-foot Army Surplus Store balloons instead, you'd only need like 8 of those to fly. Larry was true to his dream and went for weather balloons instead. Together with his then-girlfriend, he bought 45 weather balloons and helium tanks. He knew it would raise some questions, so to prepare for that, he forged a requisition from Filmfare Studios, saying he was an employee and they needed balloons for a TV commercial. On launch day, July 2, 1982, they filled the flotation devices with helium, attached them to a lawn chair they named Inspiration One, and packed the necessary supplies – some sandwiches, a bottle of soda, a camera, a CB radio, and pellets. Why the pellets? Well, Larry planned to reach the Mojave Desert and shoot out the balloons to land safely. So, Lawn Chair Larry, as he was nicknamed later, strapped on a parachute, commanded his friends to cut the cord tied to his jeep, and soared into the sky. He went way higher than he planned, to 16,000 feet. Larry was moving over Long Beach, crossed Long Beach Airport corridor, and finally floated into Los Angeles International Airport controlled airspace. The wind was blowing strong in his face, and the speed he was moving wasn't ideal for stopping. Larry was getting nervous and got in touch with air traffic control with his CB radio to inform them of his presence. At least two commercial airplanes also spotted the traveler and let air traffic control and the Federal Aviation Administration know there was a strange, unidentified flying object in the sky. Things were getting out of control. Larry was way higher, moving way faster, and going way further than he planned. He wanted to land, but he was afraid popping the balloons would make him lose his balance and he'd just fall out of the sky. 45 minutes after takeoff, he shot out some of the balloons and started slowly descending. Another 45 minutes later, he was on the ground again, safe and sound. While there was no damage to the adventurous traveler whatsoever, People in the surrounding area felt his presence without knowing he was there. The balloons that got tangled on the power lines in Long Beach caused a massive power outage that lasted 20 minutes. Though Larry wasn't injured and made his dream come true, the welcome party he got back on the ground wasn't exactly what he was hoping for. Long Beach authorities arrested him, but soon let him go with a fine of $4,000 for violation of federal aviation regulations and operating a civil aircraft for which there is not currently in effect an airworthiness certificate. The second part was dropped later because his aircraft was a lawn chair and it wasn't mentioned in any legislation. So he ended up paying a fine of $1,500 and became somewhat of a celebrity. In one of his interviews some time later, Larry said the flight was something I had to do. I had this dream for 20 years, and if I hadn't done it, I would have ended up in the funny farm. 
After his beautiful flight, Lawn Chair Larry appeared on The Tonight Show and Late Night with David Letterman. He was given the title of At-Risk Survivor at the 1993 Darwin Awards and the First Place Award from the Bonehead Club of Dallas. A San Diego band, Pinback, dedicated a song to him named Walters. And so did an Austin artist, Eggbo, with Larry Walters. In the book All I Really Needed to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, a whole section was dedicated to Larry's flight, using it as a great example of living your dreams and letting your imagination fly, literally. To top it all off, there was even an episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, The Sponge Who Could Fly, inspired by the story. All this made lawn chair Larry so self-confident, he gave up his job as a truck driver and decided to become a motivational speaker to inspire other people to never forget their dreams. Unfortunately, his lectures weren't a success and didn't bring him money or fame. Maybe it was out of disappointment or out of love for his biggest fan, a neighborhood boy named Jerry, that Larry parted with his famous chair and gave it to Jerry. Sometime later, the Smithsonian Institution asked Larry for his flying apparatus to make it one of their exhibits. He regretted giving up the chair, but what's done can't be undone. Jerry grew up but kept the chair in his garage with some of the tethers and water jugs that were originally attached to it for stability. In 2014, Jerry temporarily donated it to the San Diego Air and Space Museum, and it was on display for everyone to see. Larry Walters may not have become the most successful motivational speaker, but he sure motivated quite a few people to follow his example. In fact, he inspired a whole extreme sport named cluster ballooning. Its fans strap themselves in a harness and attach themselves to rubber balloons filled with helium to fly. On July 7, 2007, a gas station owner from Oregon used 105 large helium balloons and plastic bags filled with 20 gallons of water tied to a lawn chair to fly 240 miles. He shot BBs to let some helium out and land but later came up with a new way of doing it to make the descent way smoother. A year later, he used that mechanism on his second flight and traveled in his lawn chair for 9 hours and 12 minutes. On January 13, 2008, a human rights defender from Brazil went further with the idea and crossed the border between two countries, Brazil and Argentina, on 600 party balloons filled with helium and tied to a chair. Two years later, a traveler from the U.S. crossed the English Channel in an office chair going from Shalock, England to Dunkirk, France over the White Cliffs of Dover. That must have been a scenic four-hour ride for a guy in an office chair. Three years later, he tried to go transatlantic. Yes, you heard that right, transatlantic on balloons. But the attempt wasn't a success, and he had to land in Newfoundland. By the way, that guy created the house that was in the Up movie for a National Geographic feature. Another traveler who was brave enough to try cluster ballooning abroad was from England. He flew 15 miles over South Africa on October 20, 2017. The Guinness Book of World Records currently features the longest duration flight by helium balloons that lasted 13 hours, 36 minutes, and 57 seconds. An American adventurer flew across North Carolina. He was also the first cluster ballooner to start his journey during the day and fly through the night on 57 balloons. So, do you think it's fun or totally crazy to fly on helium balloons? Let me know down in the comments. If you learned something new today, then hey, give this video a like, share it with a friend. But don't go anywhere just yet, especially in a balloon. We have over 2,000 cool videos for you to check out. All you have to do is pick the left or right video, click on it, and enjoy. Stay on the Bright Side of life!